Good morning. This is the morning of 1st March 2021, and I want to introduce the full interview with Dr. Stephen K. Karanja that I recorded last week. So this is the full, uncut interview with Dr. Stephen K. Karanja, leader of the abolitionist movement on the continent of Africa, and especially in East Africa, in Nairobi, and in Kenya. And as I introduce Dr. Karanja, I want to thank Anne Kyoko of Citizen Go for something that she said that was very insightful. I think the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, led her to say this uh, very interesting statement yesterday. It's not completely truthful, but yesterday in uh, a group uh, in which, a uh, social media group in which we are, Anne and I are both currently members, she accused me with a very specific language of having been attacking people, three people in particular, who worked hard, in her words, to create the status quo. And she's right about one thing. I have been attacking not the people, but I have been attacking the status quo, the state of things as they are. And those three people, in response to me attacking the status quo, have been defending it. And so uh, a clear delineation, a clear line is being drawn in East Africa and around the world between those people who are defending the status quo and those people who want to abolish legalized abortion and the legalization of all the other genocides and all the other uh, abominations that are destroying the law of God in the countries and in the peoples and tribes of this earth. Some of us want to abolish them and enforce the law of God. Others, having worked very hard to create the status quo, as Anne Kyoko said, are defending it. And when you attack the status quo, they take it as a personal attack on yourself. And then when they attack you for attacking the status quo, they misconstrue you as having attacked them. In fact, that is a lie. I never attacked Dr. Wahome. Dr. Wahome attacked me because I said that Marie Stopes is a witch. Then I defended the truth of that statement. Marie Stopes attacked the medical profession outside the Hippocratic ethical tradition are only witches and warlocks, whatever you want to call them, people who are not physicians when you attack the medical tradition. I also called Susan Kahika a witch. Again, Dr. Wahomey attacked me. I defended my position because I was attacking the status quo. Again, Dr. Wahome told many people, many of whom were influential, a lie, which is that terminations of pregnancies are cesarean sections and induced labor to give birth to a live child. That's not true. In no medical dictionary, including the Oxford Dictionary, um, America, any English-speaking world, has that ever been true? Termination of pregnancy, TOP, always means abortion. And it means abortion when the Kenyan Ministry of Health says it, that their cadre has the right to terminate pregnancies. So Dr. Wahome defended the Ministry of Health, their language, what it's coming down to. And then Dr. Kanjama, who I'd never had any conversation with, attacked me. And Ankyoko calls me defending myself when he attacked me me attacking him. Well, that's not true. Dr. Kanjama attacked me, and I defended myself, and I have no problem. I'm, I'm not even complaining, oh, he attacked me. The fact is, the only thing I'm complaining about is they didn't let me finish my conversation with him. I would love to any time, Advocate Kanjama, any time you wish, any forum, publicly, uh, privately, as long as we can record it, which would make it very public. It's got to be public at some level. But I'd love to pick up that conversation. Ooh, I'd love it. Anytime you wish. But Ann Kyoko has one thing right. I'm attacking the status quo. The status quo is the 2010 legalized abortion in Africa, where the Ministry of Health has a monopoly, has been given a monopoly on deciding who the cadre is that will allow legalized abortion in Kenya. And Mari Stopes and the pro-abortion bingos, all of them are making millions and aborting thousands and thousands of babies 
using the loophole in that constitution, and yes, I am attacking it. And if you defend it, I will fight back. And so, and I'm not alone. So, enjoy this interview with Dr. Stephen K. Karanja. Yes, we are working. Yes, we are going to lead and participate in a movement to arrest and prosecute, a pan-African movement to arrest and prosecute, not to defend the status quo, but to arrest and prosecute the genocides, including the people committing the genocide and the local collaborators around Africa. In Jesus' name, and may God help us, and God help you to help us abolish not only legalized abortion, but the legalization of all the abominations and witchcrafts that cause the land itself, according to the prophet Moses, to vomit out the inhabitants thereof. God forbid. Let us instead repent together and organize to abolish these abominations and enforce the law of God in Jesus' name. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Very welcome. Yes, very welcome. You. And I, I wanted also to show you, I, I, I can't, probably can't give this to you at this time. Yes. This is a very rare book, yes. like the other one you were looking for. Yes. But this is by Michael Bray, yes. a Lutheran pastor. Yes. Uh, from many, this is several decades ago. Yes. He has, I think, 12 children now. He's been my friend for since the 1990s. Yes. He spent time in prison in the 1980s because he was involved in... Uh, blowing up two or three, allegedly, two or three abortion clinics in the, Mer in the United States. Um, so he, he was convicted of um, a felony in that, but he went back with his family and fathered several different children after that. And he wrote a book called A Time to Kill. Yes. And uh, this one I, I, I want to loan to you yes. because he has asked me to look for someone who can translate it into Swahili. Yes. So maybe you can help me find yes, that, I that someone. That we yeah. shall do. That and, we shall do. and this one is a, he, he speaks of different instances, for example, St. Joan of Arc, yes. uh, wherein Christians who were responsible for the gospel were also forced yes. to use force, yes. to use the sword, yes. to intervene to stop people from killing yes. innocent people. Yes. From the times of slavery yes. to the medieval times yes. up till today. Yes. So I thought you would be interested to, to look at this book. Thank you very much. But I will I will come uh, back for it. Come I will come back for it. Yeah. <laughs> because because it's one of the one of the last copies which are available, and I got it directly from the author. Thank you very yeah. much. Very well. I am extremely <laughs> lucky. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. I've I've been told that at Afia Center, not far from here, there is someone called Dr. John Nyam. Mm -hmm. Dr. Karanja. Do you know someone at Afia Center called Dr. John Nyamu? Yes, I do. You know him? Yes. Uh, is there anything you can tell me about him? I've been told that yes. he is an abortionist. Is it true? Yes, it is true. He's an abortionist. He's an abortionist. Yes. And he's not only an abortionist. Mm -hmm. Dr. Dr. Nyamu is actually one of the most powerful controllers of the abortion movement in this country and in this part of Africa, in this region. Because Dr. Nyamu is actually the point person, the point representative person of the abortion movement, the, the international NGOs that promote abortion in this country and in this region. They protect him. Not only protect him, but they fund him and take care of him. Dr. Nyamu is one of the most powerful people in this country, both financially and even in matters political, because he has powerful protection and sponsorship from the abortion movement from the West. Elective abortion is a felony, so why is Dr. Nyamu never prosecuted? You can't prosecute Nyamu. One, because he will be defended by people, by the most senior advocates in this country, and some may even be imported. Number two, this is Africa, and you can be able to subvert justice because of lack of the spine 
when you're dealing with a patronizing world that the country, including the judiciary, relies on. So you do not, you, you do not go to look for justice in the courts. You may never find it there. And the Ministry of Health, they will not touch Dr. Nyamu. He is not an employee of the Ministry of Health. Okay. He is a private specialist gynecologist. But he is under the medical board, which is an arm of the Ministry of Health. But Nyamu was actually taken to court in this country because of being accused of killing more than 28 babies who were picked along Mombasa Road mm -hmm. and it is the most shocking thing that has ever happened in this country the discovery of those babies and because they had notes and prescriptions coming from his clinic he was actually sued and went to court for a long time for the first time in this country i saw a lot of medical people wearing white coats and its stethoscopes in courtroom in support of dr nyamu ultimately dr nyamu was set free has he broken the hippocratic oath i do not think he subscribes to the so he hippocratic oath so you can't you can't you can't break okay. that which you do not uh, subscribe to is he, you, is he your friend he is not my friend in terms of medical and social and the war and standing for the for, for the right of people your senior colleague dr kagia dr jean kagia whose uh, whose offices are in this building said dr nyamu is a very good friend of mine she said she has meals with him regularly and she defended him as a person do you have anything to say about that yes the, she could he could be extremely friendly they mm. could be friends mm. with dr kagia but i've told you why he can't be my friend is because i would not wish to be associated with a person who clearly and openly supports abortion if dr jean kagia would find it appropriate to be friend and to become very close friends with an an apologetic apologetic abortionist then of course she has her own rights that is her business um we interviewed Dr. Kagia at length, I should say Cradles of Love did, Cradles of Life, rather let me say this again, Cradles of Life interviewed Dr. Kagia earlier last year at length, some months ago. Uh, it's, a, it's an extensive interview. Dr. Kagia, when the cameras were off in front of witnesses, uh, Dr. Kagia asked Wavinya Wanyasa to have her tubes tied. Uh, recommending that she had had too many children and should not have any more children. Who was, was pregnant at the time, is pregnant now. Uh, Wavinia has told me about this uh, comment after the interview. Subsequently, Dr. Kagia uh, called Wavinia and once again has encouraged her to be sterilized. Do you have anything to say about that advice? Mm, I, at two levels. Number one. I would kindly request that I do not answer anything at all directly to do with Dr. Kagia. All right. But I would advise Wavinia that it is wrong, it is even criminal. It is, and if she is a Christian, it would be going beyond anything known 
to accept to be joined in the absurdity of contraception, abortion, castration, and I mean, and, 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 and tying the tubes, yeah. tying, the, tying her tubes. Yeah. So I would. It is female castration. I would, I would, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. I would tell. I would tell now, directly to Wavinia. Wavinia. Do not tie your tubes. It is not your duty to do that. It is not necessary to do that. No human being, no woman should ever be subjected to something that is done in animals cows and whatever the animals they do but human beings are created in the image of god of god and you do not you do not tie the tubes of any woman for any reason and i advise wavinya not to accept advice to tie her tubes from anybody in the medical field or outside the medical field anywhere in the world for dr kagia I leave her, to, leave her, her, own, leave her. to her own conscience. Okay, I've, you are on record having le having said that. Yeah. When I met Dr. Kagia first, I was introduced to her by Wabinya several years ago in Uhuru Park. And I was happy to interview her. I had a camera at the time. I interviewed her. And she told me about her wonderful work she does as helping, uh, in terms of helping women in crisis pregnancies. And we talked for many long minutes about that but then i came to what i really wanted to ask her about and three times i asked dr kagia regarding the 2010 constitution what we should do how she could advise us to remove the terrible abortion language allowing the ministry of health and others to allow legalized abortion in kenya and three times i worded it three different ways and those three times every time dr kagia said don't think about that forget about that and don't think about that anymore what do you have to say about that i respectfully decline to comment on anything to do with dr kagia i understand i understand now regarding a certain passage in the bible there's a doctor who in our interview i won't tell you who he or she was but there's a doctor who in our interview uh, referred to a passage from timothy a famous passage where where the apostle paul told timothy that if anyone doesn't provide for the members of his own family that person is worse than an infidel and this doctor so we're not talking and you're not responding specifically about dr kagia or any other doctor right now but you're responding to this idea that the bible authorizes this doctor said contraceptives on the basis of Paul's command that uh, a man must provide for his own household and from this doctor's perspective that command to Timothy means we should use contraceptives is that a perversion of the scripture or is this correct there is nowhere in the whole Bible not just in Timothy mm. nowhere in the whole Bible is the idea of contraception ever at all given as an edict as an advice or as anything is it even winked at not at all and, and and what i want to say is that that i would consider it extremely rude for anybody to associate the Bible with their unchristian behavior and beliefs. Quote any other thing you want to quote if you want to do the things you want to do, including contraception. But not the Bible. Not the Bible. The Bible is the book of life. It doesn't need any other definition. It is the book of life. It is the word of God. So to quote it in defense of sterilization is, is, is a it's curse. Evil. It's evil. It's evil. Yes. Um, are you
are you aware? Now, I know you have told me you are not going to comment, comment on anything uh, regarding Dr. Kagia directly, but I'm going to ask you anyway, whether you forgive me or not, I have such audacity. Uh, are you aware professionally, because you have sworn and are, let me, let me back up, let me back up, Dr. Karanja. You have sworn the Hippocratic Oath. See I, have, I have. The full oath, which says, I will not perform abortion. I have. Yeah, and I will do no harm. In fact, the whole, the whole foundation of the Hippocratic Oath is primum non nocere. In whatever you do, first, do no harm. On issues of abortion, it even says if in your mind you contemplate giving anything or any concussion for the purposes of procuring an abortion, you have already broken the oath, you already excommunicated yourself from the church of God, from the church. Of God and, fr and from uh, from being from, a doctor, from being a doctor. Yeah, you are not Never a doctor. Never mind whether you are Muslim or it Christian. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You are from that time a witch, a witch person. If you are a man, is a witch. You, you are a witch. You are witch because whatever you are doing now, you are doing on foundations that the founder of the profession known as medicine taught from the beginning that to practice this act you must not that you need to agree no you must you can't be a doctor and break the oath you are outside the definition of a physician yes you to be a physician you must respect the hippocratic oath so when we say Dr. Jan Yamu, this is only a formality. He is. He is not really a doctor. He is not a doctor. He is an abortionist. All right. All right. An abortionist, maybe can even other people can cure, can treat a lot of things, but that does not make them doctors. Yeah. To be a doctor, yeah. you must respect the Hippocratic Oath. The Hippocratic Oath. Yes. Does Dr. Kagia, to your knowledge, prescribe chemical or hormonal contraceptives? No comment again. No comment again. Now, regarding chemical and hormonal contraceptives, are they potentially abortifacient? Not potentially. They all chemical. You see, the chemical contraceptives are made from two hormones, estrogen and progesterone. They have a minimum of five mechanisms of action. Prevent ovulation by attacking the egg. Mm. Affect the fallopian tube. Affect the pituitary gland. Affect the cervical mucus. But over 50% of modern contraception works by affecting the endometrium so that the con so that the little baby cannot be implanted in the womb indeed it is correct to say at the level of science that all all contraceptives that are dependent on the two hormones estrogen and progesterone way work by causing abortions it is not that they are potentially abortifacients they are abortifacients they cause abortions they are made to do that it is not that they do that as a side effect hormonal contraceptives are made to cause abortion they are a tool of chemical abortion does this include uh, pills, injections, and coils? Co co coil is on two levels. The original coil, the Lipe's loop, worked. I wish you could give me just one minute, i show you what I mean. All right. Because I have it here. All right, all right.
I've never... These are these are the demons. I want you to look at them and know them. The demons as they exist. This is this is the lipes loop. It is the lipes loop. Like you can see if you pull it up, it gets straight. If you do it like that, it goes into a coil system. In fact, the name coil comes from this gadget. That's the name where the name coil is. Like you can see, it has a plastic material on top and it has a nylon, two nylon strings here that normally are left in the bath canal when this is put up. Why was this made up and how does it work? This gadget, the coil, has only one mechanism of action. It is made to prevent implantation. It is made to poison the lining of the womb. This is an abortive, an aborting, an aborting creation. It doesn't have any other mechanism of action. This is the coil. I understand. And there are modifications of it. Initially in the 70s, it was found in the third world, including Africa here. During that time, what was available in your country and in the Western world was this. This is a copper tea. Oh. A copper tea is also referred roughly as a coil, but you can see it is not even coiled. It is in a tea, and what you see being black there, this is copper, that is copper, and that is copper. And it is put on this frame of plastic, again the two strings that rest outside to remain in the in the in the in the to remain in the bath canal for it to be felt by the woman wearing it no it is still in and number two to be used to pull it out when the time comes for it to be pulled out where is the where is the chemical that causes the uh, now action this copper is a vicious cardiotoxin mm. it kills the baby it goes for the baby, it kills the baby. That's why this thing looks smaller than the coil. If you look at the coil, the coil is much huge because you need it this size because to it causes more. to deliver, to mm -hmm. deliver what it needs to do. But this you need little copper Very little. and you will kill any developing baby in the womb. Wow. It does not work in any other way. Mm -hmm. It works by causing abortions. So, do coils therefore work like contraceptives? No. Co some contraceptives sometimes prevent ovulation. Sometimes work on the pituitary gland. Sometimes work on the cervical mucus and prevent ascent of the male seeds into the, into the, into the upper reproductive system. But this is actually introduced inside the womb for one purpose to directly kill the baby. No, it does not reach the ovary, it doesn't affect the ovary, all the pituitary gland, all the pituitary gland, all the mucus in the cervix, all the movement of the fallopian tubes, it only kills baby by either. This one by directly poisoning the baby with the copper and the plastic in it, causing the inflammatory reaction in the lining of the womb, the endometrium, and therefore, huge cells called macrophages which eat up the little baby and kill it even before implantation there is no such a thing in terms of abortion as vicious as this and the other one too this one too yes okay. but there is even a third one this one here is called melina 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 is this one oh this fat one with a fat stock here now you can see this fat one here mm -hmm. this fat stock is actually levonorgestrel is a hormone is a very very powerful progestogen it is put here so that you can have dual function number one use this 
to cause inflammation and make sure that the baby can implant and these thin out the lining of the womb so that the baby cannot implant double attack double confrontation for the baby deliberately to kill the baby now there may have been you know better than me there may have been some confusion decades past as to the mechanism of these devices uh, you know better than me but at this point 2021 is there any excuse for a pro-life physician to be either prescribing or recommending or excusing this uh mechanism this if device if, if they are doctors i can tell you clearly and they have been near anywhere medical facility for the last 40 years the mechanism of action was, been, uh, was always clear well known yes okay it never there has never been any change in the mechanism of action of this thing this device was created to cause abortions so if they're claiming not anyone specifically if, the, if, if there are doctors claiming to lead the pro-life movement or to be pro-life doctors or leaders and yet they and they are physicians or claiming to be physicians and yet they are excusing or promoting this mechanism are they pro-life they are not physicians in the first place ah there are a lot of pro-life people who are not doctors yes being a doctor is double-edged because yeah. you are calling for the sword of our lord if you kill a little helpless baby deliberately you're not a physician you are not a physician can you be pro-life pro-life you how can you be pro-life and at the same time killing little babies uh -huh. yes that's contradictory so you are neither a physician nor a pro-life person. Are you aware of any pro-life leaders or leaders claiming to be pro-life or, or to be physicians who are promoting these things? They are all over the place. Yeah. And they are all over the place because of many, many reasons. One of them is because of their double standards. Number one, idiocy. Number three, pretense. Number four, greed, and especially greed for money. If you are, you have been trained as a medical person. There is a large market from the Western NGOs, Mary Stops, IPPF, and all other organizations like UNDP, UNDPA, UNFPA, the World Bank. All these organizations will pay you beautiful dollar if you accept to use your knowledge to kill babies. So if you enter their pay, you become a slave to the demons. And you may think you are a doctor, but you are not a doctor. You excommunicate yourself the first time you kill a baby. Has, has Dr. Kagia, your senior, has she publicly defended these mechanisms? No comment. No comment. I understand. The Ministry of Health has spoken about a cadre. Their word is cadre. In their statement opposing the Kihika abortion bill. And they said that that cadre is an exclusive cadre. I'm paraphrasing now. Which uh, cadre is authorized to determine when a pregnancy may be terminated. What do you think that means? I mean, I think it means madness. 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 Mad, 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 mad. Because it is pretense and um, confusing and destroying and distorting. And especially when you talk like that from the Ministry of Health is extremely criminal because you mislead those who rely on your opinion. And especially the policies from the Ministry of Health which is at the helm of the practice of medicine in this country. When they use that term, they are being deceptive. 
And they are not only being deceptive, because the Ministry of Health is is not is is not somebody. It is a functional unit that is getting advice from people. Mm -hmm. The people who advise the Ministry of Health mm -hmm. to have any group of people that give any reason that says you may kill a baby for any reason that group is a poisoned group is a terribly compromised group they're exo hippocratic also they are not medical people they have excommunicated themselves and therefore exo hippocratic when you excommunicate, you excommunicate yourself when you in your intention. So they, when they say termination of pregnancy, in this specific context, they're not talking about molar pregnancy. They're not talking about ectopic. You can't terminate a disease. Mm -hmm. Pregnancy is when the male and the female egg unite at that instant when you have a one-celled human being that is pregnancy fertilization fertilization yes yes that is when pregnancy starts in biology that's elementary actually pregnancy starts biologically in embryology, when the male seed and the egg unite in fertilization, what is created is a human being who is one-celled, but with everything they will ever need in their life. That is when pregnancy starts. Pregnancy takes two roots. A pregnancy can become a disease. And therefore, the issues of terminating it do not arise because Hippocratic doctors, from the beginning of known medicine, have always ways to deal with the diseases. Mm -hmm. And they are formulated, are written down, even the procedures to deal with issues of such a diseases exist, and that now comes to the issue of ectopic pregnancy and molar pregnancy. So, so the Ministry of Health is clearly not talking about either of those. No, it can't be when because they say that's a of when they talk yeah. about termination of pregnancy, they are so, talking about the second leg of pregnancy. Elective abortion. Which it, means it has gone into the womb I, and therefore they aim yeah. to destroy, to kill to I, remove what is to abort to abort is to stop i i have researched this term yes uh, termination of pregnancy yes. for, for many years yes and i did a further research yes. last year yes when one of your colleagues but i won't say his name yes. a very handsome gentleman yes but i won't tell you his name yes responded to the question that i'm asking you yes and he said yes. that the ministry of health by termination of pregnancy yes. means um something like inducing childbirth something like a cesarean section the ministry of health does not mean elective abortion in this statement they released in opposition to kahika's bill i researched and i found in india in north america in europe in the united kingdom in the history of the world in the history of the top term no evidence that it has ever been used by pro-lifers by pro-choicers by anyone to refer to anything other than elective abortion did i make a mistake did i miss something no, you didn't make, and you didn't need to do all that research uh -huh. because this is elementary. Actually, it does not need research. It is elementary biology. Mm -hmm. It is elementary embryology. So what do you say? What do you say? It is when you use the word termination of pregnancy, you mean deliberate killing of a healthy baby at whichever gestation you intend to do it that is what termination of pregnancy is all about in science, in embryology, no research necessary. 
No such term has ever been used no, for a cesarean section. You can't use it. Why would a physician say such a thing? Because there is the called the lumbering of the confused um, people who trained in medicine and now they can't find their way in, especially in the war against abortion. They think they are pro-life, but they are totally deceived. They are totally confused. Is it possible that out of desperation, because the Ministry of Health was helping us to fight the Kahika bill, out of desperation for the help from the Ministry of Health, that some people are entering into even deliberate confusion and spreading deliberate confusion out of that desperation to keep the Ministry of Health to be perceived on our side. The Ministry of Health has never been on the side of the pro right. All right. Number two, only somebody who is completely misinformed may think that the Ministry of Health can ever be pro life. Ministry of Health is halfway funded by abortion agents, is controlled by abortion agents, employees, senior abortion agents. So the Ministry of Health has never been pro right. But the Ministry of Health is in catch 22 in terms of the Kehika Bill. Because any idiot knew that the Kehika Bill was purely an abortion bill. Abortion at any gestation, from conception up to birth of a baby. That is what the Kehika Bill was all about. The Constitution refuses that. The Ministry of Health is the arm of the government that deals with health. And therefore, the Ministry of Health was not saying what it thinks. It was saying what the governments want to say. So, so when Susan Kehika was going around for weeks and months, uh, in defense of her bill, saying that the bill did not, uh, she told my mother-in-law, by the yes. way, I'm telling you, that the bill did not legalize abortion. She told people, many journalists, it was reported on that the bill did not legalize abortion, did not legalize abortion. Was she lying? Yes. And uh, yes, again, because Senator Kehika is an extremely intelligent woman. But Senator Kehika is, uh, is halfway as American as you are. Mm. And uh, her American and Kehika, Kehika actually is, I hear, is a great friend of your vice president. Mm. Uh, this uh, Kama, 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 Kama uh, Harris, uh, somebody who has herself is not only an abortionist, but uh, a terribly, a terribly, a terribly dis disorganized person. Because I saw one of the pictures, one of the clips of yeah. her, in fact, marrying off two sodomites and saying they're <laughs> husband and wife. Yeah. So she, if, if Kehika is a friend of these Kahama Naris. Is it called a Kahama or what? Yeah, uh, Kamara. Kamala, uh, Kamala. Yeah. <laughs> yes. May I just say Camel? Yeah. <laughs> now, yeah. Kehika is extremely intelligent. Kehika knew from day one because she was working for four main groups. There are others on the sides, but four main groups. She was working for Mari Stops. She was working for UNFPA. She was working for IPPF, the World Bank, and she was working for UNDPA. Those were the main sponsors. UNFPA? U yes. Is there any chance, is there any chance that she was simply uh, well-intentioned and ignorant and simply needed to be informed? No. Kehika did not need any education she knew directly she wanted to introduce an abortion law in this country that was all encompassing from conception to birth against the kenyan constitution she knew that from the beginning because kihika did not conceptualize the bill the bill was conceptualized by another senator six years, four years previously. So in instead of trying to educate, if she's not ignorant. Yeah, she's not ignorant. Instead of trying to educate her, should we be what? Should we be exposing? Should we be confronting her and calling her to repent? 
not repenting. Repenting is a bit. She should be arrested first. You can't. Uh -huh. She cannot. She cannot repent. She should be arrested before. Yes, she must be arrested because number one, this country, our constitution, does not allow deliberate killing of babies and especially it's conspiracy to murder isn't it if i if i wanted to kill my wife yes even if i hadn't done it yet if i you begin should to be talk about you it should be if arrested. i begin to talk with you about doing it yes i must be arrested you should be arrested you should be arrested and you should be and you should be taken to task for why you intend from a position of authority to deform the public who look up to you and especially on something that is aimed at attacking and destroying our own constitutional preservation of life is it going too far to say it is conspiracy to genocide it is not conspiracy to genocide it is genocide because every murder that you see starts in the mind like you say if you think about killing your wife you should be arrested that is correct when you think about killing kenyan children you should be arrested you are thinking about killing kenyan children once you is express genocidal. it once you express when it. you express it it is genocidal you should not only be arrested, but you must be taken for due process in a competent jurisdiction and be forced to pay for your evil. And Kihikas was an evil mind. At this point, Dr. Karanja, under the under the 2010 Constitution language, yes. does the, is it fair to say that the Ministry of Health has an abortion, a legalized abortion monopoly? Yes. In Kenya. Yes. It's fair to say that. Yes. All right. Do you think that primarily the opposition of the Ministry of Health to the Kihika Bill is because they it would destroy their monopoly? No. The Ministry of Health is ordered by the attorney general to do what the government wants ordered nice. the ministry of health was fighting the kika bill from another foot one foot that was completely unacceptable to the government was comprehensive sexual reproduction co comprehensive sexual education education and that had been termed by a previous minister for health as teaching children immorality and then minister during the 2014 when this bill first and came to senate that minister said clearly for the country to hear that the government will not allow any law brought by anybody from inside or outside the country that wants to teach the children of Kenya immorality. He was right. The government has not changed that, that stance. The government still accepts that and it is as it should. So they were not saying that related to abortion is only the only now lack we had is that the same pot that contained comprehensive sexual reproduction is the same pot that carried abortion and it was inseparable because Kiheka would have been forced to divide it and then say one and bring two bills one on abortion and one on reproduction on, 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 on comprehensive sexual reproduction as long as that bill contains comprehensive sexual reproduction education it can never it is unconstitutional from the beginning it is dead during conceptualization it's dead on arrival and when they use the word reproductive health the minute they use that that word 
in this country for now before we get maybe a dictator who will say that we can go to hell as long as that word is used it will not pass because reproductive health includes as one of his pillars comprehensive sexual education, education. which means destruction of children from 10 years it is, it is perversion of children isn't it yes, yes. it is perversion of children from 10 years onwards and it will not pass does the ministry of health allow certain physicians who maintain a special relationship with their cadre to abort to perform elective abortions abortions are done under the supervision of the ministry of health and have been done in this country from the beginning i understand has the kenyan pro-life movement been in some sectors subverted all the time it is the kenya unless and here I want to tell you, Jonathan, in a very, very serious manner. Because this is a ministry I've been involved for a long time. Mm -hmm. Over 30 years. Mm -hmm. I've been in this pro-life battle. I have seen even the strongest of us approached, coerced, bribed to subvert their values, their faith and the, their fight against these anti-life forces. So, until and unless we can compact the remaining warriors in this, the international community, the so-called bingos are already out there planning and like now, they are like animals on heat because some Biden was elected in your country to become the president of the world. And the fellow is, in fact, an, an abortionist because he supports abortion. Unless the forces of life, those who will not give in under any condition, put their foot on the ground. And not only just start that they will not accept that, but start now to confront and to attack and to pursue these Western evil forces from this country, nay, from Africa. Then we are going nowhere but i promise you that it is possible and that it can be done and that it will be done because a new dawn is here that we have seen what has happened elsewhere and we have seen what is progressively happy happening here now we have already stood up and the way forward the way forward and I don't want to scare you, mm. is going to be absolute confrontation, absolute attack. This war, and it is war. Your battery is running low. Go, go ahead, go ahead. Finish your statement. This war. This war, and it is a war may not may not be bought be fought with axes and swords but it may but it must be fought because if we have to protect with the same force the unborn like we protect with every force the adults it's not a metaphorical war. No. It's not metaphorical. It's no. a real war. It is a real with dead war. bodies. Oh, it must be. We already have so many dead and born babies. So let nobody say that dead bodies are going to start appearing. They are littering the whole the whole scene. It is only that I am saying that now no more hiding behind bushes 
all pro-life workers must rise up and be counted and be ready for the consequences of their war because they must fight it. Africa is going to be the bastion of pro-life work throughout the world. When we have extinguished these forces from the West, from amongst our people, then we will come to your countries and teach you all over again to protect life because you must be retaught. Is Kenya a keystone to the encroachment upon Africa and East Africa by these bingos? And define bingos for me, please. Big international non-governmental organizations are bingos. That this congregation, this conglomeration of evil and, in my view, demonic forces that come together with one intention of destroying human life. That is what bingos are. Now, you ask whether Kenya is the platform on which these bingos want to spree was to get to the other countries. Kenya yes. is a very strange country because this country is in a way the center of Africa. This country may not be big. This country may not have a big population, but I can tell you that this country has some of the bravest people I have ever seen. Not in Africa, but are also in the world and they are ready for this war. Time has finally come when clearly we must tell, especially the most ruthless, the most vicious of them, like Mary Stops and IPPF. These ones who are the children of evil racists. Mary Stops, a child of one of the most evil women that lived in this world called Mary Stops. Dr. Karanja, are, are European, American, <clears throat> excuse me, British and or other Western compromised pro-life organizations that have already failed, chronically failed to abolish abortion in their own countries, are they exporting their failure or attempting to export their failure to Africa or to Kenya, they, without well, intending to or not, regardless of their intentions, is that happening? It is happening, but somebody must pity the Western world and the was uh, um, pro life fighters. No, they accepted to be raped. Accepted to be raped. It was not forceful. They gave themselves out to lose their faith, to lose their spine. They became addicted to being soft, to being gentlemen with murderers. They allowed themselves to be, to be, I don't know how you say this English, but what they allowed themselves to be is to be gentlemen with the people who are killing children. And they do not want to speak a word that will be considered rude in the presence of these murderers. That is the disease the Western world suffered, the Western, the Western pro-life movement suffered, and this is what they are bringing here. And for the most part, part they are meaning well. They are meaning well. They, they are, they even consider themselves beauty, wonderful Christians, and they are bringing it up. They mean well, but they were made ineffective by a particular modus operandi. They were operating the wrong way. The pro-life way is the way of Jesus Christ is the way of changing your your horse into a sword is defending your family even if it means 
using force. When and I criticize, when I criticize their language, um, sometimes and and their failure, and I talk about the historical record of failure in the Western world, the failure to abolish legalized abortion. I am met with sometimes behind the scenes, which I cannot document, efforts to subvert me, but I know they are happening, and sometimes I am openly confused of being un, uh, accused, accused of being uncharitable. And charity seems to be defined sometimes in a way in which the priority of, as you said, being gentlemanly or polite or civilized towards the people killing the children is held to be a higher priority than the defense of the people being killed. Have you noticed this phenomenon? It is starting in Africa, yeah. and we must stop it. And it's taken over 50% of the fighters. They have become polite. Polite to a fault. They do not want to say something that will annoy somebody. What do you think about this analogy? My father was a senior elder in several different churches over the past 25 years. And in certain denominations, we exposed Sunday school teachers, uh, leaders, other people in the church who we found out were chronically and over decades, in some cases, molesting children, boy children or girl children, sometimes their own children, sometimes other people's children. And in each of these cases, there were people, including wives, women, wonderful seeming people involved who were not doing the molestation directly, but they were covering for these people out of a sense, a misguided, almost a madness of politeness, where they couldn't break those parameters to say the things that needed to be said and to do the things that needed to be done and to expose the people that needed to be exposed because of the victims, because their lifetime of experience at being polite held them back. They had no frame of reference for how to break out of that bubble or that habitual politeness, which became something grotesque in the context of the crime that was being committed. Is this an apt analogy? Absolutely a repetition of what you are saying. And especially the loss of faith because the faith in Jesus Christ abhors politeness. Does Jesus ever become angry? Oh, he takes a whip and whips a whole lot of people out of desecrating his father's house. Jesus gets angry severely. Should we stop the people killing innocent children whether they repent or not? I calling them to repent and I want to be very very clear about here they people can only repent what they did by mistake deliberate actions of evil must be preceded by reparation unless you repay the damage you have caused unless our god is a joker you repenting what you keep my goat and then you want to repent bring my goat first mm -hmm. and then you can repent and don't do it again but bring my goat first the western world must demand the holiness of their families to be brought back by force have they emasculated jesus does not he does not exist you can't emasculate that which does not exist but i mean the jesus in their mouth the jesus i don't mean the real jesus yes i mean the jesus they are <laughs> preaching the jesus is like 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 like, like fries yeah. jesus like fries, give me fries, give me Jesus. Jesus, I love you. Chips, I love when they have more salt. Jesus concept, Jesus, our Lord, is a whole serious B. 
business. You never mention his name in vain. The Jesus you hear people talking about is an advertisement charade. They are selling something. It's, on, like, it's like KFC. Oh, it's like McDonald's. Yes. It's like McDonald's. Yes, they're yeah. selling something. They are not talking about Jesus the Christ. They are not talking about the Son of God. They are talking about some about a sales, the thing they are doing, which who, whose name is Jesus. Okay. What it, this is too big. <laughs> All right, what is your prescription in a nutshell? In a nutshell, the short version for abolishing abortion in Kenya. Kenya, abortion in Kenya is going to be abolished and must be abolished. Legalized abortion. Legalized abortion is going to be completely abolished. No half measures abolished because without abolishing it then it is here it's going to be abolished number one by tearing down that part of the constitution that talks about it and throwing it away and never allowing it to be put in our statutes again number two all christians must refuse and i call them to violently refused refuse to respect or accept any law that does not protect the unborn. If it exists, you must disregard it. And you must not only arrest those people who push such a law, but you must also take their property and chase them out of the country. Give the property to their victims. Give the property into the fight of getting them out of the country okay, because they must okay. get out of the country. Okay. And this fight is going to cost money, is going to cost lives. Uh -huh. and, I, and I do not want anybody to cheat themselves uh -huh. that they are going to give in without bloodshed. And if any pro-life person fears bloodshed, Please go away. Go away. There's already bloodshed, by the way. Babies, dead babies are strewn all over the place. For the sake of God. The blood, innocent blood, is flowing down like levers. Blood is already flowing. There is going to be more blood. Only that this time, it is going to be the blood of those people who have been killing children the killers and it must be done and there is no shortcut to answer this and they will be told so that the testament is clear and if they refuse some of them i have no legs to stand on anyway uh -huh. look at the crippled ones like mary stops mary stops should not take a week to get out of this country ippf should not take a month to get out of this country. It can go back to Europe, go back to London, and to America, where it is started the mile with Margaret Sanger. Get and the hell out of this country. Oh, is it too strong? There is. Oh, that is not <laughs> stating it properly. They must get away with everything and all there and never come back. Abortionists, get out of this country and stay away of this country and never come back here because we are going to protect our unborn children there are some people who have said or they strongly imply if they don't say it outright that african states and african africans like kenyans like yourself have no uh, moral right to convene or establish a war crimes tribunal the way the west does after world war ii the nuremberg tribunal uk us USSR to try the Nazis, for example, or the Japanese, for things which were legal under their governments and yet were categorized as war crimes. And now they do at The Hague on a regular basis, dragging uh, Africans or third world Eastern European leaders before The Hague in the Netherlands to try them. They claim that moral authority and yet 
they imply either by their silence or by the things they say and do that Africans have no right to do that. That Kenya, for example, and Tanzania or Tanzania and Uganda have no right to convene a tribunal to judge or adjudicate crimes against humanity, especially when it comes to crimes committed by those European or Western nations. What do you have to say about that? Whose morality? Whose moral authority are you referring to? The, Africa, the Africans are not tied by the white man's moral morality. Mm. They have no morality anyway. Mm. Yes, and whatever they call morality does not apply to Africa. Mm. They may not, they know nothing about Africa and Africans. They know a little bit about the little confused Africans that they have educated and trying to transform their minds mm. into slaves. Mm. But uh, they have no idea about the morality of Africa. There is a country called Rwanda, who had, had genocide in 1994. This country threw away the Hague thing that they brought to Tanzania and made their own courts called the Cheche, which is completely African conceptualized, which sorted out all the cases that needed to be sorted out within five years. The white man has no understanding. He has no capacity of understanding the African mind, the African man. He has no capacity because he, he knows nothing. Africa is the world of survival. Africa is where you live and let live. Africa is where you confront a lion to protect your family. Africa do not need the white man's morality. Africa has decided the white man must go away. Many years ago, my own fathers told the white man with his guns, white man, time for you to leave our land and they attacked him with their bare hands with swords with spears and with his guns he was run to the ground we have a history we don't die easy and we don't give in to intimidation we are going to set a court and we are going to drag them into these courts. Who are them? The bingos. So and, they are, and they are local collaborators. Collaborators. We are going to bring them in front of these tribunal and we are going to form it and read and follow this pace, we are going to form the African Tribunal on abortionists and anti-life forces and especially the Western engineered groups. So these are these are war crimes, specifically abortion, legalized abortion, mass contraception, poisoned vaccines. Oh, especially those ones. And the cowards. And don't think they that is why when you go out there and especially when you go back to america remind them that because they have no morality they can't have moral authority what? authority maybe but moral no do it's we... like power it's not authority yes. it's like the power this new this snake yeah has. It has power it, 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 yeah but not authority not authority yeah. we are going to stop this thing now what about the um, the biden administration the western governments the eu's attempt to strong arm african nations and other peoples of the world to decriminalize sodomy is this genocidal i was in europe when obama became the president of america and a lot of africans that time erroneously actually celebrated but i give a news 
conference in Europe when Obama, this day Obama was being sworn in. And I said this. Somebody asked me, you are Kenyan, you are very happy. Uh, Obama has some roots in Kenya. And I told him, I am extremely sad about America. One is that Obama is not Kenyan. Number two is that if he came, would chase him away. Mm -hmm. Number three, abortion, um, um, uh, Obama is an abortionist. Mm -hmm. Obama respects sodomites. In Africa, you killed for sodomy. And here I tell you, I'm a Kikuyu myself. Mm. Amongst the Kikuyu. From the beginning of time, a sodomite was killed the same day. Killed the same day. Amongst my people, there is not even going to court. A sodomite is a creature that cannot be allowed to sleep one more day in the community must be killed the same day now before you tell me that i'm talking as though i'm not a civilized doctor i am going to repeat it again i am kikuyu and i was a kikuyu before i became a doctor mm -hmm. and i will kill a sodomite today if i find him the western countries can go wherever they want to go and Biden and that Kaharis of yours of the deputy of his can do whatever they wish to do but there is one thing they must know in Africa sodomy this is not Europe this is not America you can't bring your crazy things to Africa especially amongst the Kikuyu I promise you law or no law Constitution or no constitution, attempt sodomy will kill you the same day. Today. Thank you. Don't even think about it. You spoke about Obama. I think you may have heard, you know Malcolm X was assassinated uh, some yes. decades ago. Yes. We always hear about Do Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Yes. and his assassination. Yes. Tragic assassination. Uh, but we hear less about Malcolm X, and I think it's because some of the things he said were, were more razor sharp than some of the things that Dr. King said yes. yeah, on some occasions. Yes. That's my opinion. I'm not yes. putting words in your mouth. Three days ago, the family of Malcolm X uh, brought letters and evidence that the FBI may have been involved in um, the same institution which, as you know very well, had me uh, illegally detained in Nairobi uh, a year and a half ago. Uh, may have been involved in his assassination. But Malcolm X, you brought up Obama, and it made me think of something that Malcolm X said. Malcolm X said, to paraphrase him, that there are two different kinds of black Americans. There's the house nigger and the field nigger. <laughs> I didn't say this, Malcolm yes, X said it. <laughs> yeah. and the field nigger is that nigger who's out there working in the field during the days of slavery who doesn't have a choice and he's doing backbreaking labor, he's picking the cotton, he's harvesting the crops, and he's being whipped, and he's living hand to mouth. Uh, but the house nigger is the one, the black American who lives like the master, because he's developed that relationship where he deliberately defends the interests of the master. Even he doesn't even know the distinction between what happened between to the master and what happens to himself. And so, I'm not putting words in your mouth, but that I'm suggesting that uh, in the paradigm that Malcolm X gave us, that uh, Barack Hussein Obama is a, a house nigger. That's what I had to say. I wanted to comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> this interview is about you. I want to thank you for the interview. And I, I, if you I, have I, anything I, to I, add... I wanted to yes. add this. But you know, Jonathan, yeah. you are so American. Mm. Because you... It doesn't matter how much you struggle, you are still very polite. Mm. And this politeness of an American warrior mm. is what we must remove from you now that you're in Africa. Okay. You, we ca you can't afford to have that. All right. It is not saying that it is as if the FBI and CIA had something to do with that. That's how you put it. Uh -huh. It is not like that. The FBI and C 
CIA had everything to do with the assassination of Malcolm X. Well, I don't know because I don't have the facts. You don't need yeah. the facts. He's dead. All that right. is fact. All right. Yes. All right. At, when somebody dies, you don't need any other fact. They are dead. When a baby has been killed, I don't want evidence. I know Mary Stops have something to do with it. Mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. IPPF mm -hmm. have something to do with it. Mm -hmm. I know American and European bingos have something to do with it. Uh -huh. I do not need any evidence. Uh -huh. When a sodomite does his thing, on the list of anyone in my community uh -huh. i don't want any other evidence apart from he has committed sodomy and by that there will the jury sat a thousand years ago and said he must die today there are evangelical christians right now in the pro-life movement who are defending sodomy. I'm bringing this as a first-hand witness. I've heard it from their mouths in person, and I've heard it through uh, social media repeatedly. And I've been attacked for defending those countries on earth, most of which are in Africa, which still criminalize sodomy. Many of them coming from, uh, at least formally, even though, as you said, for Kikuyus and many others, it is traditional going back thousands of years. And, a, and in a biblical route, but many of them, the official laws are coming from British common law, which has been repudiated by the British themselves, and yet lingers in the statutes of many former colonies. Having said that, I am facing pro-lifers, evangelicals, even a few Catholics, uh, who are actually advocating that these laws be repealed, these laws making the act of sodomy a felony. And my response to them has normally been to say that, that uh, in Leviticus, Moses said that the, that the prohibition of sodomy is universal. In other words, it's not like the special laws given to the Jews. It applied to the Canaanites, just like the Jews, just like any person. Moses said the land would vomit out the people who allowed sodomy. And they are repudiating me and rejecting me on that basis. I don't know if you have a comment about I, The only comment I have this is America is surviving on something they call the green card uh -huh. because Americans cannot produce babies Reproduce because they babies. started having sodomy. Uh -huh. Sodomites don't produce children. They yes. produce stool. Yeah. They don't produce babies. Even with a woman. Obvious. They produce stool. Yeah. Not babies. The sodomites of America killed the American family. In a country that, produ that practices sodomy is on its death no. Can people who defend contraceptives have any moral authority over sodomites? They can't, because if they oppose contraception, it is because they defend the family. It's because they consider a woman as a very special creation by God and will kill to protect her from being cannibalized by businessmen so the sodomite can say can't he to the to the christian who promotes contraceptives and yet wants to restrain the sodomite saying why are you restraining me because you poison your seed why should i not be allowed they are not christians they are not talking to christians uh -huh. you can call yourself the queen of sheba uh -huh. you jonathan uh -huh. that, that that does not make you queen of sheba uh -huh. You can call yourself whatever you want to call yourself, but you will know the truth, by, the tree by its fruits. Because God creates conceptions. Correct. Not only that. You will know a Christian not by what they say, but by what they do. The things you are calling Christians are not Christians. They are calling the evangelicals you are talking about. No. They are not Christians. No. No, they are calling themselves that. They could be sodomites for all you care. And you can't Some be, of them have and, been publicly uh, recently and, exposed as uh, being sodomites. And you yeah. can't be a sodomite yeah. and be a Christian at the same time. Number two, before modern Christianity was had in my community, 
before my community knew any other communities except our neighbors lived mm -hmm. thousands of years ago before our lord jesus christ was born our laws that control our community were written by what we call muangiwairegi they wrote the rules and one of the law is that if sodomy ever happened the sodomite must be killed the same day that is when the verdict was given what we do today is to carry it out watch out whether you are a christian or who you are practice your sodomy outside the kikuyu community because we will surely kill you today will be there the consequences who cares bring them but we will not allow a sodomite in our community will they what if they are bishop bishop of what they just call themselves <laughs> bishops they are not bishops mm. you can't be a bishop and be a sodomite because you can be a bishop of some tree you worship in America mm -hmm. or somewhere else, but not in the Kikuyu country. We will kill you. Sodomy is evil. Sodomy is anti life. Sodomy is so evil, it is satanic. I do not, Satan has never been accused of, of, of involving himself in, 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 in sodomy. Sodomites are worse than Satan himself. No, I'm not being an insensitive. And you may think, Jonathan, that I am ignorant and do not confuse my skin. I am an extremely highly educated human being. Uh -huh. I am at the top of my profession. I am a practicing consultant, obstetrician and gynecologist. And I tell you today, a sodomite, happens in my village will kill him today no question will the police come let them come and we shall tell them we killed a sodomite because he should be killed it should be killed a, a sodomite dehumanizes, dehumanizes himself. himself it becomes it you can't call him he even the john the revelator calls them dogs yes <laughs> it is it it's not he and I tell you in America, I tell you in the West, before you bring it here, I tell you, you have no choice. You have to hunt down Solomons in your own country, incarcerate them till they all change. Because remember, it is not genetic. Remember, something be genetic? Is that it is not genetic. They have decided. How can something be genetic when, 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 when they are not engaging in sexual reproduction <laughs> <laughs> it is not genetic yeah they did not get it from their from their forefathers they have decided to defy society and society must vomit them out of society in a society that allows sodomites to survive is a society and to death it is a society that is going to die i tell you i'm happier fighting kill us like abortionists mm. but sodomites i don't even fight them you kill them you must kill them you must hunt them down they are plague they are a disease they are disaster they are not demonic they are the demon himself there are there are africans who think that <clears throat> africa is immune to um legalized sodomy but in fact as you know very well the communist south africa the communist nelson mandela legalized both abortion and uh and sodomy yes immediately and to this day i myself have been hit upon yes by black sodomites yes in the streets of johannesburg yes i myself yes have been have been hit upon yes. by them uh why do uh, why do africans because worship nelson and Winnie mandela because mandela is the worst creature that crawled out of the walls of prison in south africa the thing that came out of that prison is not the thing that went in mm. The thing that went in was Mandela. While inside they converted this poor man into a creature that came out. He was not Mandela that came out. Mm. And, and, and it is unfair to call him that. Mm. Because Mandela died. 
in many prison. years in prison. prison. Yes, okay. he died in prison. Okay. And what came out was a caricature of an individual okay. who was not a leader of anybody. Okay. In fact, he got a part of Nobel Prize. Can't be Mandela, can yeah. he? No. In Africa, just like in Europe, just like in America, remember the Mammons who are the first people who came to America? They would not accept a sodomite amongst themselves. That's that's not true. It's it's the it's the the the, the, the Puritans. The Puritans, the Puritans. yeah, yes. the Puritans would not allow that. No society of sodomites has ever survived because they do not produce children. Start, start again, please, if you don't mind. Yes. Remember the Puritans. Yes. Yeah. Start again, so, if you don't mind. The Puritans who started the American Republic as we know it did not have sodomites amongst them and that's why america grew and was blessed yes now america for the last 28 years has been going down america 28 years ago started the green card why they couldn't support their own pediatric industry they couldn't run their own industry why because they have they had forgotten how to have children now there were green cards before then but they expanded that program yeah oh yeah. yes yeah. now they can't survive now canada is on to them all countries that have accepted is sodomy the dying demographic they are dying demographically and they will die and i promise you that in this country when some of us and our children are still alive the bingos have a big problem because we have inculcated in our children the concept of a people alive a, a man and a woman having a child for tomorrow and we have repeated the rules of our ancestors and the rules of our ancestors have some things you don't touch you don't touch contraceptives no. you do not kill babies you do not allow sodomites to live if it happens the sodomite must be killed the same day that is why in my opinion you will have a legacy as africans and if the west doesn't have revival repentance sincere repentance and what you have said, this repudiation of an arrest of sodomites, our only legacy is an inseminated tud. God will not allow it. You are there, Jonathan. Yeah. You are American. The years I have known you, I have seen a renewed sword of the Lord <laughs> flaming over America. And there are others out there. There's a big remnant. Oh, Thank you, they Lord. are there. Thank they you, are yeah. there. The only thing I tell you, refuse anybody who tells you not to have children. The remnants that God has left in America is enough mm. to repopulate America all okay. over again. Okay. Go back to bed and have children. Okay. And do not take contraception. Okay. And do not allow at least you are luckier you are allowed guns one day i pray this country will allow me to have a gun i'm praying for because that because if i, I it up, have I, it yeah. if i have it woe to them the sodom the sodomites and the abortionists would literally have to run on on foot mm. because i would be after them mm. yes thank you dr Kruger. i just need to have the ability and i will run out the abortionist out of this country we do not want to control abortion we want to ex to remove it we must remove abortion. you don't want to regulate it. no yeah no we must remove it it is not acceptable it, what? it is like sodomy it, it cannot be regulated it cannot be accepted it must be extinguished like it was never there I've finished my questions, but you've made me think of another one. The floor is yours, by the way. I've finished my questions. But the question I have now is what I have seen, there's a self-perpetuating um, 
nature to what passes for a pro-life movement, which actually becomes a pro-life industry that works in conjunction in the West with the legalized abortion industry. And it, it, it revolves around regulating what you just mentioned, regulating legalized abortion, so that pro-life leaders are looking at a future where they hand on abortion opposition, what they're calling abortion opposition, to their children, to their grandchildren, with insurance plans, with retirement plans, and they live and leave a legacy of resisting abortion that is dependent on abortion being legalized because what is being called the pro-life movement in the West actually is dependent on abortion being legalized so that they can continue to perpetuate their ministry and the cash flow that supports their ministry. Are you understanding the picture I'm painting? I, I understand that clearly. dynamic. I have seen it. Have you seen it in play? It is starting. But it is unfortunate because we are going to exterminate it. All right. My grandchildren will not fight abortion. Me and my children have a duty to exterminate abortion from this country. They will, my grandchildren will not meet it here. So they will have nothing to fight. And if that means some people are going to lose their salaries from the UK, the United States, Spain, or anywhere else. Let it be. Let them find something else to do. Let it be. Yeah. Let them die of hunger yeah. if they are crippled. Mm -hmm. And if they are crippled and they are truly crippled, we shall support yeah. them like we support every other okay. person who is handicapped. Okay. But a lazy person who survives in manipulating people to kill the unborn they have no right to life themselves and they they have two options i'm talking about people who pro-life leaders oh, i know and organizations i know that they have two options whose cash cow whose milk cow is whose abortion cow. is abortion yeah. they get paid to be by the same thing they want to reduce the gestation from when when abortion can be done as though if i if you killed me when i was two days i would be alive today they want they and, and they are and they can fight these in courts and what and get money and donations to fight these they leave off the blood of the dead children and they call themselves pro life i we hear even you have clearly. that cartoon we yes. even have that cartoon that was made in the 1950s yes. famous cartoon in the u.s by yes. warner brothers yes. where the wolf and the sheepdog yes. are friends yes and at the beginning of the day they clock in chuk, chuk. they put in their time cards they shake hands they have their lunch boxes during the day they fight at the night they clock back out shake hands yes say hi to the wife <laughs> i'll see i'll see you tomorrow i have seen it pro life pro-choice advocates but have a mutual dependence some of the most senior, sometimes i told you no comment okay in some questions you asked me okay but i tell you some of the most senior so-called pro-lifers in this country live the type of life you say and that is why they will support every evil that we fight so that they continue to have their money they have made their money out of these evils and they keep the evil burning because it is what keeps i have seen very senior pro life people giving contraceptives they do not want to know that contraception is abortion and they will fight unto death if you tell them that it is abortion and it is common sense they can read anywhere they defend it so that they make money out of it the cash cow of these pro life leaders is the abortion industry it is here already and that's why i told you a few times i no comment because i do not i do not think that they deserve to be mentioned Okay. In the same breath that says that sodomites should be killed. There's a message I want to pass. No sodomy, no room for sodomy in this country. In the next five to ten years, no room for the abortion industry. I agree with you in Jesus' holy name. Amen.
Thank you. Big international NGOs, big international NGOs, big international NGOs, get the hell out of my country. Satanic organization subversive to our culture. Big international NGOs, big international NGOs, big international NGOs. Get the hell out of my country. They're here to sterilize our moms, our sisters, wives, and daughters. Big international NGO, big international NGO. Their motivations are not good, their passion is demonic. Big international NGO, big international NGO, big international NGO, get your hair out of my country. Abortion is their cup of tea, eugenics is their motto. International NGO, big international NGO, big international NGO, get the hell out of my country. They're here to call the human herd, enslave our souls to evil. Big international NGOs. Big international NGO. Please get the hell out of our country. We don't need you people. Please get the hell out of our country. So tell these witches loud and clear and may the Lord rebuke them. Big international NGO. Big international NGO. Big international NGO. Get the hell out of our country. Big international NGOs, big international NGOs, big international NGOs, get the hell out of my country.